Morning everyone and welcome back to the homestead. It is a sunny day here, one of the few that we've had in the last month, it seems. I want to give a big thank you to Purina for sponsoring this video. While we have collaborated with Purina on this year's pigs to use Nature's Match and feed it from 25 pounds all the way up to market weight, all the opinions you're gonna hear in this video are my own. But this video is not gonna be specific to Purina. Most everything we talk about here can be applied to any other brand of feed as well. And it really is just giving you a general outline of what to look for. I wanna talk to everyone today about feed for pigs and in general, how we choose feed for our animals. If you're new to raising animals, new to raising chicken, new to raising pork, new to raising turkeys, new to raising really anything on your small farm or homestead, your feed selection is one of those things that can seem daunting at first. You walk into the feed store and there's all sorts of different things there. But I want to go over kind of a broad spectrum, just a really generalized, high reaching, what you should look for in feed. This is not going to be a discussion on organic versus non-GMO versus standard feed. Uh, all that is, is something else, but this is even going to apply to all of those things. Whether you choose an organic feed, whether you choose a non-GMO feed, whether you choose a, a standard feed, um, those are decisions you'll have to make. But all of what we're talking about in this video will apply to all of those things, whatever you choose to purchase. Let's get this feed ready for the pigs so that they calm down. You can maybe see them back there. They're, they heard me walk out of the back door and they got all excited. So let's get the feed for them and then we'll talk a little bit and then we'll get the rest of the animals fed as well. been going through a good bit of feed. All these bags next to me are empty. The pigs are just about six months, so they're going through a good bit of feed a day. And even though we're giving them the right amount of feed for their age and weight, they still let you know when they're hungry. They also quiet down really quickly. Once you get the food in front of them, aside from a few snaps here and there, they'll kind of nip back and forth. Uh, put that food down, it generally, you can see right as I started talking, they're gonna start making noise. All right, so choosing a feed for your pigs or any animal, all this stuff applies to any animal, but we're gonna kind of talk about pigs today because that's, what we raise the most of here. The biggest thing I always consider when I'm looking at food is, is the food complete? And what I mean by complete is I don't mean, is it like a whole food like you would think about if you were a human. We are eating like a, a, a whole strawberry or something that's been largely unrefined. The whole point of feed is that it's been slightly processed and not necessarily in a bad way, but the processing in this case involves your Ingredient, your raw ingredients, whether it's corn, whether it's soy, whether it's wheat middlings, uh, whatever those ingredients are, they go into a feed mill, essentially a gigantic grinder, and it goes in with your vitamins, your minerals, anything else in the mill is gonna add to that feed. It gets ground up and then it gets pushed out in either pelleted form, it gets pushed out in a crumble form, which essentially is just crumbled up pellets, or sometimes it comes out in raw powder form, which can be a mash, which you mix with water and you feed your animals. The benefit here is that the mill is doing some of that digestive work for your animals and starting to grind up the food without taking away the nutritional value. Meaning when your animals eat that feed, they're going to have an, an easier time to turn that feed into meaningful weight gain. So when I say whole nutrition, what I mean is that the food you select is providing 
all the nutrients that that animal needs, not necessarily in a whole unground form, but all the nutrients that that animal is going to need to, to grow and get big and really raise a, a, a healthy animal, that's included in the feed. It's not something, there's not something else that the animal is going to have to look for. And the reason I do this is so that when I put food in front of my animals, I know that they're getting everything they need to grow and I'm not gonna be slacking on anything. There's nothing they're missing. To put this in perspective, I've had pork from pigs that were raised basically on corn and sweet feed. And those pigs, while they tasted okay, um, they didn't produce a lot of meat per se. It was mostly fat and the fat was a relatively un unappetizing consistency of fat where it was very soft uh it, it kind of here's what i'll say there is grizzly fat and there is really soft and mushy fat and then there's a fat somewhere in the middle which tastes delicious this fat was not in the middle this fat was soft and mushy and kind of unappetizing Another thing I look for in my animal feed is probiotics. And this is kind of something that's come to light in the last few years. People kind of always knew about it. Just in the last few years, you really started seeing it in animal feeds. Whether you're raising a cow or a pig or a goat or chickens, all of those animals' stomachs and digestive systems involve bacteria and all these little essentially stomach bugs, not like a fever or a, or a virus stomach bug, but little bacteria and microorganisms that live inside their stomachs. We can promote stomach health in general by, by having our animals ingest probiotics, much like a human would when they're eating yogurt or kombucha or any fermented foods. The same thing applies to our animals. So when I'm looking at a feed for our animals, whether it's chicken, turkey, pig, I look for probiotics in that feed. I look for these uh, microorganisms to be added to the feed in a dormant stage. That way, as they enter the animal's body, uh, they're hydrated, they become active, and they assist that animal in digestion of the food, uh, both for a, a overall gut health, but improved quality of meat at the end. With those microorganisms inside, they're going to be able to take more of the meaningful nutrients out of their feed and turn that into eggs, pork, whatever you're raising the animal for. And the probiotics thing is something you may have to dig a little bit deeper into your feed to find. If you look at the front of this bag right here, which is Nature's Match, which we've been feeding, a versatile pelleted 16% plant sourced protein, complete feed for all pigs, sows, and boars. So there's that complete feed, which we said was important before. But the bag, whether you look at the front or the back, it doesn't say anything specifically about probiotics. What you need to do is kind of know what you're looking for and go to the ingredients label which you'll see down here and if you look closely at the ingredients label you'll see dried bacillus subtilis fermentation product that is the product of lacto fermentation uh, that fermentation is the process that you use to make naturally fermented pickles sauerkraut virtually any fermented feed um, that is your lactobacillus this feed has that but it, it's not marketed anywhere on the bag so you do want to look at the ingredients label uh you know you're going to see all sorts of other stuff in there but when you're looking for probiotics that's something that you want to check on and see does it have it in there i do want to take this time to thank purina for sponsoring this video uh we've been feeding nature's match to our pigs from the time they were about 25 pounds when we got them this feed brings to light one of the last things I look for in a feed for my animals, which is convenience. When Purina developed this feed, they wanted to come up with a one feed solution for, for farmers that had mixed uh, herds of animals, um, pigs specifically in this case. If you have a small farmer homestead and you're raising your own animals, you may run into situations where you have mixed herds, where you have 
a couple lactating sows, you may have a few gilts out there. At any point, you could end up with a, a bunch of different age group hogs in an area that you want to feed one feed. And that's where the sow and pig comes in. We're not at the point yet where we're farrowing our own piglets. Uh, we may be there in the future. I don't know. We're, we're kind of at the point where we only want to raise 10 pigs a year. That's going to be probably the max of what we do. However, if we found ourselves in a situation, and this is totally plausible, we find ourselves in a situation where we've got a couple sows, and then we have those sows mixed in with a couple of feeders that we're raising, and possibly we sell the other piglets to other people. We don't have to worry about splitting the sows from the pigs that we're gonna be raising to slaughter. This is one feed that we could give them all, and it would provide complete nutrition for all of them. Something else I look for in feed and a benefit to choosing something like Nature's Match from Purina is that it's available in multiple places. Now here in New Hampshire, we don't have many feed mills. We, have, we actually only have one feed mill and it's not open to the public. And I can't go and ask for a custom blend there. Even if I could, we all run into the odd situation where you run out of feed and it's like seven o'clock at night and you need to grab a bag quickly for the next day. That's where having a bagged feed as our main choice really helps us as small producers because I can run to any tractor supply and I can get a bag of the Nature's Match. Uh, there are multiple other small dealers around that carry Purina feeds and I can get it through them if I'd like to. Purina feeds in general and Nature's Match as well tend to be really readily available. You can get them almost anywhere. And for a small producer who also lives a, a complete life outside of their farm, having a readily available feed that I can just grab on the go if I need something quick, that works. And I don't have to shift feeds. I don't have to buy something else. I don't have to upset the apple cart in terms of digestive health. Just like humans, if a pig eats something that they're not used to eating and it doesn't agree with them, it's not a fun time. So availability of feeds. Make sure that you can find your feed, whatever you choose, make sure you have a source for it. And if you're not buying it in bulk, make sure you have a source for it where you can get that feed, even if it's, you know, not a dedicated trip, if you can just grab it quickly if you need to. Any way you slice it, no matter what feed you decide to feed your animals, another important thing that you gotta stay on top of is giving them fresh, clean water. So I'm gonna go ahead into the pig pen and do that right now. Thanks for watching everybody. If you like what we talked about today and you wanna see more, make sure to click that subscribe button down below. We'd love to have you along for our journey. Have a great day, bye.